Hi, it's Tim from Oracle Base. In this video, we'll step through some of the basics of using Vagrant to build test virtual machines. All the examples will be run on a Windows PC, but Vagrant works equally well on Mac OS and Linux hosts. I use all three on a regular basis. There are links in the description box for every website mentioned in this video. Before we start, we have to make sure we have VirtualBox and Vagrant installed. Vagrant will work with other hypervisors, but by default it uses VirtualBox, so that's what we'll use. Go to the VirtualBox website, where you can download and install the VirtualBox software for free. You can install VirtualBox on a number of platforms, including Windows, Mac OS and various Linux distributions. Install it on your host machine, as instructed on the site. Next, go to the Vagrant website, download and install the Vagrant software. Like VirtualBox, Vagrant can be installed on Windows, Mac OS and various Linux distributions, and it's free. With these two pieces of software installed, we're ready to start. Vagrant boxes are pre-built virtual machine images. Think of them as base or gold images. They can be bare bones operating system installations, or have whole environments installed on them. You can find lots of pre-built boxes online or build your own. We can list available boxes we already have downloaded using the vagrant box list command. Let's remove a couple of them and add them again. The vagrant box remove command is used to remove an existing box. The first box isn't used by any vagrant managed VMs so it's removed cleanly. The second box is used by two Vagrant managed virtual machines, so we have to confirm we want to delete it. This will break those VMs, but I'll rebuild them when I need them. Now we'll add back the boxes using the Vagrant box add command. In the first example, we'll add a box called Bento Oracle 7.6, pulled from the Vagrant cloud. There are versions of this box for multiple hypervisors, so we have to use the provider parameter to identify which version of the box we want. The second box is added manually from the Oracle Yum repository. Since there's no metadata about it in the Vagrant cloud, we have to manually specify a name using the name parameter. If we reference a box in the Vagrant cloud that's not already downloaded, Vagrant will automatically download it, so you may not have to use the add command very often. We use a Vagrant file to build a virtual machine from a box. To create one from scratch, we make sure we're in a directory where we want to hold all the information about the virtual machine config. Then we issue the Vagrant init command. This creates a single file with the name Vagrant file. The contents of the file can look daunting at first, but most of it is comments with examples. If we remove the comments, we see this. To create a new virtual machine, we just need to amend this config to say what box it should be based on. Let's use the Oracle Linux 7.6 box we downloaded from Oracle. With the Vagrant file amended, we can switch back to the command prompt and start the new virtual machine using the Vagrant up command. Looking at the VirtualBox console, we can see the virtual machine has been created and is running. Provided we're in the directory with the Vagrant file, we can control the virtual machine from the command line. The Vagrant status command shows us the virtual machine is running. We stop it using the Vagrant halt command. We start it again using the vagrant up command.
We can remove it completely using the vagrant destroy command. The minus F stops it from asking us for confirmation. We can alter the configuration of the virtual machine by editing the vagrant file. In this example we've switched to using the Oracle Linux 7 box from the Vagrant Cloud, created by the Bento project. We've set the memory to 2 gig, the number of virtual CPUs to 1. We've altered the virtual machine name to test1 rather than accepting the default name. I'm using a solid state disk, so I've set the non-rotational property for the disk. We've already destroyed the previous virtual machine created by this Vagrant file, so we can build the modified version with the Vagrant up command. Notice the virtual machine name has been set. Also notice the port forwarding, mapping port 22 in the virtual machine to port 2222 on the host machine. If we're in the correct directory, we can connect to the virtual machine using the vagrant ssh command. Once connected as the vagrant user, we can run commands as root using sudo or switch to another user including root. Alternatively, we can connect using an ssh client. We connect to the Vagrant user using the port forwarding mentioned earlier. Here I'm connected to my local machine on port 2222, which is being forwarded to port 22 in the virtual machine. The password of Vagrant is used for both the root and Vagrant users. In this case I've not been prompted for a password because it's stored in my SSH client. The slash vagrant directory in the virtual machine is mapped to the host directory containing the vagrant file. That means we can put subdirectories and files on the host machine and use them in the virtual machine. This is how we can present scripts and software to the virtual machine allowing us to perform automated builds. As a simple example, we create a scripts directory and create a script that installs the zip and unzip packages. Using the command prompt on the host machine, we can see the scripts directory is now present. This is important as it shows the script is outside the virtual machine, so it persists even if we destroy the virtual machine, as you'll see next. We edit the vagrant file, adding a provisioning section with an inline script, which in turn calls the setup script we just created. We can now destroy and rebuild the virtual machine and see the setup take place. Up to this point, the creation of the virtual machine looks similar to what we've seen before, but now it's running the inline script, which calls our setup script. As expected, we see the zip and unzip packages are being installed. We've just scratched the surface here. It's possible to alter the virtual machine structure by amending the contents of the Vagrant file adding new port mappings, virtual disks, network adapters and shared folders. And of course it's possible to install and configure software inside the virtual machine at build time using shell scripts and other automation tools. The goal is to script your test environments so you can rebuild them at any time without manual intervention. Thanks for watching. As always there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.